What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So this video that we're gonna do is kinda a little bit different than what we normally do. Um, for those of you guys that are new to the channel or this is the first video you've seen, this is my dad's 69 L88 Corvette that we raced in the Fast Series. Um, if you don't know what the Fast Series is, it's factory appearing stock tire um, is what Fast stands for. It's pretty much what you see right here. Car has to look 100% original, run on the original tires, but uh, any internal modification in the engine is allowed. Website is fastdrags.com. You can check that out. And then we've got many videos of this thing and the orange Camaro that you see back there. All last season, we filmed every event we went to um, and kind of documented everything. So plenty of videos on this stuff if you want to go check those out. So this video is going to pretty much just give you an insight on uh, pretty much how this car, as it sits right now, went a 937. At 146 mile an hour so we'll just start front to back and we'll start explaining everything to you guys all right well under the hood is where a lot of the work is done to get this thing to go down the racetrack and run low nines in the quarter mile on the chassis dyno, we made right around 720 horse to the rear tires with this thing. Through the exhaust manifolds, full exhaust. So the exhaust manifolds have been heavily ported, extruded honed, and uh, you know pretty much every trick you can do to the inside of the manifold. But from the outside, they look 100% original. Um, they do flow very well, but do not flow as good as a header because this engine on the dyno actually lost 100 horse when we went from the headers to the exhaust manifolds. Um, so they flow good, flow a lot better than a stock manifold, but uh, we're nowhere near to this engine's full potential with a set of headers on it. <coughs> We've got the factory appearing big block valve covers on it, um, the factory intake with the correct numbers for this car. Um, the intake has been, you know, ported and cut apart, and welded back together, and a bunch of tricks done to the inside of that. One of the tricks that we've got to these that we're actually not secretive about, if you go back and watch all our videos, I'm explaining what I'm doing on the laptop and everything, is the timing controller that we have on it. So the distributor appears like a stock or a MSD distributor when uh, it's actually a Holley distributor that is controlled by Holley FI. Now Holley FI was made for electric fuel injection, so we're not using the fuel injection part of it, but we do use the data logger, the timing controller, um, and all that as huge ways to improve this thing and make it go down the racetrack. Because if you're just driving down the track, you're supposed to be reading your air fuels and you're looking out your side window, watching the fans and looking at the car that you're passing and everything, you're not paying attention to your air fuel gauge, you got no idea what the car's doing going down the racetrack, then you get back to the pits and you want to make a change, well guess what? You don't know what kind of change you're going to make because you didn't read your air fuel meter. So that's a huge thing in these. Not being EFI, not uh, you know being able to change air fuels going on the track, you got to be on that. We jet these things all the time, um, so that's huge to be able to record that going down the entire racetrack. Um, another thing that's big is timing controller. So this thing makes way more power than those tires will actually hold. So to be able to pull power and uh, you know get into the throttle, get the thing moving down track, and then start bringing the power back in is a, a huge secret, and it's not really a secret, but it's a huge um, advantage to somebody not running that stuff because when I mean, you're just sitting there playing with the throttle with your foot, and you're not gonna be consistent. Um, and that's just, uh, that is a big reason on why these cars are as fast as they are. So this is a John Kilgore Turbo 400 in this car. Um, 210 first gear. A 210 also you know helps us get into the throttle a lot quicker than the original. 248 first gear so yeah this thing's been 142 60 foot and uh, right there I just gave you the big secrets to uh, why this thing's been 142 60 foot um, front shocks it's got adjustable front shocks on it that are honestly probably as old as I am and probably need rebuilt but the thing works so well that we really don't want to touch it um, but I do think we're leaving a lot on the table with uh, you know, not having a good adjustable shock up front. So we're gonna move back to the interior and we'll show you the inside of this thing. Uh. 
Alright guys, so the inside of the car, there's really no tricks or anything to it. You can see it's got an 8 point roll bar in it. Um, on the steering column you can see it's got a tack and the little square display is actually for a Holley EFI that actually shows. Um, we've got programmed in there to show oil pressure, water temp, air fuel, and I believe we've got fuel pressure on it too. And then, I mean, you can see the line lock button on the shifter. It's a reverse manual valve body transmission. It's factory seats, um, factory dash. I mean, that's all pretty much in here has to appear like it's stock. The Fast Series isn't against safety, so, you know, any safety thing inside, I like the roll bar and the seat belts and everything you can have. So the inside's not gonna look like the outside does, but I mean, it's always good to have all the safety features. All right, so the back of the car is almost as important as the front of the car. And it's really right on the rear tires. Um, rear tires are Firestone wide ovals. We buy these right from Coker Tire. Like I said, they're G70 15s. But where you actually get them to work is, as you can see, they look like a slick. Everybody walks up and says, oh, I thought you guys ran original tires. You guys ran slicks on these. No, they're actually original tires that we have shaved down. A local company shaves them down for us till they're right about at the wear bar or a little less. Then we take them out and uh, lower the pressure to about five in each tire and do a couple big smoky burnouts to get the tread wore off them, get a little heat in them. And then when you do it at like five pounds, it also squishes the tire down and breaks down the sidewall. So, you know, the tire's not, you know, rock hard. You don't have a real rock hard sidewall. This thing will actually wrinkle up the rear tires on a launch and, uh, you know, make the tire appear to be a slick. It'll be all wrinkled up. I'll put a couple pictures up of it, but, uh, a lot of time has been put into the tires to get them to work like they do. Still has the factory IRS rear suspension on it. It actually still runs the factory single leaf spring. Still got the factory trailing arms on it. Um, really the only thing that's upgraded is uh, the factory rear differential has a 12 bolt in it. And then uh, we did upgrade the output shafts and the axles actually were upgraded to aluminum. We've broken two aluminum half shafts this year. And uh, we keep on going back to the chrome mollies. Now, since we broke the second aluminum half shaft, we're gonna keep the chrome mollies in the car. But uh, yeah, other than that, the rear suspension is, you know, 100% stock, like I said, stock spring, um, stock IRS. Everybody thinks it's got a solid axle in it, but it does not. 410 rear gear, it's got a spool in it. And then uh, the rear shocks are also QA1 adjustables that are just as old as the front shocks that I would love to upgrade. But since the thing works so well, we're going to leave it alone for right now. So for the fueling in this car, it's got a small three gallon fuel cell that's hidden where the factory tank is. Um, we are on Q16 fuel in it, and then we've got, uh, you know, lightweight fuel lines that run up to factory looking fuel lines to keep the original look. The lightweight braided lines are ran through the frame so you can't see them from underneath. Full two and a half inch exhaust from the manifold all the way back. One X pipe, not allowed anything bigger than two and a half. Exhaust has to exit the factory location which is a real killer on these cars also. So not only, not only are we choking them down with the stock exhaust manifolds, two and a half inch exhaust all the way out to where the factory exit is. Um, I mean, that's, that's huge also. So the best flowing muffler we could find is a Dynamax Ultra Flow. Um, Pipes makes a race muffler. Hooker makes a Max Flow. So they're all pretty much the same design. They're, you know, a muffler filled with fiberglass with a perforated tube that runs right through them. They all made the same power within one horsepower at the rear tires. Um, so I mean anything that is a two and a half inch, you know, fiberglass filled muffler will work fine. We actually, if you watch one of our videos on the Orange Camaro, we lost 70 horsepower using a set of chambered mufflers. Um, you know, those things, the air goes in, it's got to shoot over, shoot over again, and, you know, 
with the exhaust manifolds and the two and a half inch exhaust, as soon as we can get that exhaust out of the car, the faster it's gonna go. Running a chambered style muffler is not the way to go because it just, you know, you wanna get the exhaust gases out as fast as possible. All right guys, so that's pretty much the basic rundown on this car, what it is. There's some things like, you know, engine specs, cam specs, stuff like that, um, that we're not gonna give out just because the engine builder has spent so much time on it and uh, we just can't go out and give away every single you know, secret and detail that we've worked really hard on. We already put way too much information out and yeah, some of the stuff we're gonna kind of keep to ourselves. But uh, Fast Class, like I said, if you don't know what it is, you can go to FastDrags.com and check it out. Many cars that look 100% original running down the quarter mile. And there's not just nine second cars. There's guys that are battling that are running tens um there's guys that are running um in the 11s you know guys coming from all the way over on the east coast you know to run you know 1180s and having a blast and it's not just um the nine second cars the fast cars it's not just the faster fast cars there's there's a lot of good people in fast racing and uh you know, a lot of people get stuck on you know if i can't run nines i can't come to the fast drags and have fun or compete um, there's there's pretty much somewhere for everybody so as far as these two cars right here we've got multiple videos on them um, you know we kind of started out doing the orange Camaro about a year ago on the dyno when we were learning things and uh, people were so interested in it we started filming every race and uh, we've got a pretty good following just on the fast series our two fast cars so I think after this video we'll do one on the Camaro we're gonna pull the motor out of the Camaro um, we might pull the motor out and you know do a once over on that show how you could do you know we went 952 so pretty much how you could do build a nine mid nine second 69 Camaro we could show we'll show our tricks on that thing too kind of like what we did with this and uh, that'll that'll make a cool video for you guys so we're gonna end this video right there if you guys are new here, you're seeing this video for uh, for the first time, be sure to check out our other videos. Um, be sure to hit that subscribe button because all next year we'll be racing these cars, taking the camera with us, and some pretty cool behind the scenes videos of what actually happens at the track and uh, the changes we make to go down the track and stuff like that. A lot of in-car videos, um, which you saw a few of this thing, but a lot of in-car videos of a lot of other cars. We take that Camaro, we've got a Corvette that Ryan breaks when he drives <laughs> and uh, all sorts of cool stuff so yeah if you're just uh, new here hit that subscribe button and uh, you know follow along with us so thank you guys for watching and we'll see you in the next one <laughs>